Hello everyone, before we start this video, if I could ask you to subscribe to United24 Media on YouTube, we put out some great content and are well worth a follow. Now, on to today's video, and we're heading back to Vuladar. Hello everyone, I have some satellite images to show you of Vuladar, and they are definitely worth a look. I have two batches, the first one's from February the 7th, the day after the aftermath of the big battle on February the 6th, the first of which is on screen now. So this is the corridor where Russian forces got stuck after driving into anti-tank mines and then getting pounded by artillery. The black marks you can see are artillery impacts and burn marks and that sort of thing. As you can see this corridor was absolutely mullered. Now what happened is Ukraine used the RAAMS to mine this and other routes. RAAMS stands for Remote Anti-Armor Mine System. These 155mm shells which disperse 9 anti-tank mines. These can be delivered from a range of between 4 to 17.6km away. They are typically used with the M109 or M777. Around 10,200 of these were sent by the US. Given the fact they use the NATO standard 155mm round, I would expect other howitzers such as the Panzer Harbitzer would be able to use them too. Here's an image zoomed in where, amidst the destruction, you can make out a pair of vehicles which were left behind. And on this image, also zoomed in, we can see another pair of vehicles very close to each other. So this road got absolutely pounded. It's riddled with artillery craters and blackened ground from fires. It must have been absolute carnage down there. So it's no surprise at all that the losses were so high. If you'll recall, there was a series of photos published online which showed at least 31 vehicles lost just on this stretch of road, not to mention many other vehicles in different areas. This column was a very sizable force. It consisted of a mixture of infantry fighting vehicles such as BMP-1s, BMP-2s, that sort of thing, as well as heavy armour, mainly T-72 tanks and T-80s. I believe the most common one which we saw here was the T-80BV. So a very sizable force. So this is along this stretch of road here. So they didn't even get near Vuladar before getting malleted. And this isn't the only image I have for you. First, I will do a zoomed out one. This here is from the EOS website. It's a great free source for satellite imagery. The image is from February the 11th. Vuladar is highlighted in blue. So the black splodges you can see on the map are from artillery impacts. So it gives some idea of the extent of the fighting that went on around this area. Now I've highlighted the key areas where we can see most of the shell impacts. The one to the left hand side near Shevchenko is the corridor where around 31 vehicles were destroyed. The others are other areas of advance and artillery impacts in and among Ukraine's own positions. Unfortunately, the satellite coverage cuts out just east of Vuladar so we can't see the extent of artillery fire further east. Let's zoom in on some. This one here is in Vuladar itself, and sad to say, the city has been hit hard. All of the areas to the east of the town have been bombarded by artillery. Now, we don't know the extent of Ukrainians' losses. We haven't really seen any videos or photos showing them. This was likely trying to target troop positions, as Ukraine wouldn't have artillery here, situated so close to the town and so close to the front lines. So it gives some idea as to Russia's tactics. Basically, hit the town as hard as we can with artillery to clear out troop positions and then overwhelm the town with armoured vehicles. Here we have artillery strikes on more Russian lines of advance, this time to the east of Vuladar itself. Here, it looks like Russia tried advancing up three routes, each of which were heavily mined and then hit by artillery once the mines did their work. Just north of the routes, there are more artillery impacts. These are on a road leading west, just toward the north of Vuladar. The road leads pretty much to a mine which is there. A coal mine, not an anti-tank mine. So some vehicles did make it through the initial corridors here, only to come unstuck on the road heading west, as you can see artillery impacts littering that road too. I'm going to create a small map with each key artillery hotspot shown, so we have a better understanding of it. Here's the map so far. 
Now this is a very rough map, bear in mind. So we can see that push number one was from Shevchenko, looking to head north and then likely push west to hit Muladar from the western side. It could also have been intending to head into Pavlivka and push from there. Push number two was heading north from Mykulska and then heading west to come at Vuladar from the northeastern side. Ukrainian positions were in the square, remember, also hit hard by enemy artillery. This image is a Ukrainian position again. Now this is a coal mine. The artillery impacts aren't as extensive as in other places, but the coal mine was targeted by Russian artillery. So again, an attempt to clear defenders from the mine. The mine is here, just north of Vuladar. And as you can see, Russia's planned push along the road heading northwest would have taken them directly to the mine. This would have been a great way to cut off Vuladar from any resupplies. The mine and its surrounding infrastructure making for a solid defensive position. I would guess the plan may have been to cut off Vuladar using this force striking here and then hit it from the south with the other part of the force, slowly capturing Vuladar while it's completely cut off. The next hotspot to look at is Pavlivka town itself. Some of this may be older damage from the initial battle for Pavlivka, which itself was hard fought, but we do know that Russia occupies this town and part of Russia's thrust towards Vuladar did come from this town, so many of the damage you can see will be new. Other than the spot marked number one on the map, there aren't any other real major hotspots, no corridors of mass losses as we've seen previously. So either the push from here was small compared to the others, or this area wasn't mined and hit by artillery, and instead, this push was beat back by a conventional methods, anti-tank weapons and the like. Finally, finally, this image here is just south of a mine, a smaller hotspot of artillery strikes in the cluster. So there was a small push here too. So let's turn to the map again and see what all of this tells us. So Russia pushed towards Vuladar along six main routes, four of them aiming to push north from Mykilska and then head west to capture the mine and cut off Vuladar. One, which may have been smaller in size, heading from Pavlivka. The final one, the one that was hit the hardest by artillery, was heading north near Shevchenko. Now it's possible the force coming from Shevchenko was going to head east into Pavlivka and join the assault north from that direction. Or, it may have been intended to push north and hit Vuladar from the west hand side. I'm not sure. But either way, that column never made it even close to Vuladar before being taken out. The red squares show the positions where Ukrainian defenders were hit by artillery. Now, I have seen mention that there was a Ukrainian counterattack from the north, shown roughly by the red arrow. But I don't know the size of it or where exactly it took place just that it was in this rough direction. This one was likely mopping up remnants after the Rodrian by artillery and mines. So, textbook tactics, mind the roads leading into the town, once the Russian vehicles drive over them and get stuck, hit them as hard as they can with artillery. And it clearly worked. At least 31 vehicles have been confirmed lost, Actually, the number of confirmed losses is higher because we've seen videos and photos from other regions. So, the total number of losses could be around 50, could even be more than that. It's possibly the single biggest loss of vehicles since the Severodonetsk River crossing, which went pear-shaped. During that, if you'll recall, around 80 vehicles were confirmed as lost. We saw those on photos and videos after the scene. There have been some claims that the vehicles lost at Severo the next river were even higher, up to 100. Now it wouldn't be a loss. Now it wouldn't be a loss without some idiocy involved. So I mentioned this in a past video which I posted online this morning, but in case you missed it, it's worth covering again. So Russian tanks were fitted with mine rollers and mine plows, which were said to be more effective than the UR-77. But the tankers didn't like using them. So it's been reported that many of the ploughs and the rollers were removed from the tanks and just left by the side of the road in Pavlivka. Would these ploughs and rollers have made a difference? Who knows, but taking off a mine plough certainly wouldn't have helped matters. So this was pretty big. Most of the vehicles are a mixture of infantry fighting vehicles, so we're talking BMPs, that sort of thing, 
and also tanks. Mainly T-72 variants and T-80s, I believe. There's also been some confirmed losses of UR-77 minesweepers here. So, that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If so, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again, and take care everybody.